We often think we should understand what we see and know what we like, but art can be challenging. It has meant different things at different moments in history. Art gives us access to the way other people have seen the world realities. Welcome to the Art Express. Come on and explore. First on Gallery, Rayleigh Gallery presents an exhibition titled Who We Are When the Glory is Gone, curated by Wana Udoban. The body of paintings is an exploration of the in between the oscillation from how we present ourselves to the world against our actual realities. Let's go there. The art, type of art I make is contemporary art and they're surrounded, they're based on my stories and my personal experiences, a condition I have called alopecia, which I inherited from my mom, which I inherited from my home, own mom. And yeah, I use my art to talk about these stories and growing up, how I navigated having to do with loss of hair as a child. And mostly it's just talk about, for people, it just used to talk about the condition in general to people so they can be more aware and raising more awareness and letting people know that you know we're still cannot to have hair and this condition isn't um, contagious it's just what happens and doesn't make it less of a human doesn't less make it of a woman so this story this work documents each process i'm going through that i've been through and i'm still experiencing with my condition oh i use acrylic paper collage and in, in the works i actually take actually research people's stories that have alopecia and how they dealt with it and that's what like the paper clips are for the people's stories and also in the in the 90s when you go to the salon they made it um hair has been a part of woman like without hair the people are just cafe has not been beautiful right even when you see posters i'm like oh Without hair, you're not beautiful. And then you see yourself with no hair, and then you're wondering, does that make you less of a person? So the poster themselves project what beauty is and what the world is saying beauty should be, should be the standard of beauty. But then you, you feel yourself as you're not up to standard. And those, that's what all of this is about, raising clips from, from those um, eras and saying, you know what, times have changed. There are more researches now, and hair should not define a woman. With or without hair, a woman is still beautiful. There are other aspects. If you take out the outer part, there's still inner part, the interior part is still very beautiful and that's what my work is supposed to project. This body of paintings is an exploration of the in-between, the oscillation of how we present ourselves to the world against our actual realities. A kind of sense-making of being void of said glory. The works in this series play with wigs and scarves as objects of masking, figures adorned in brightly colored Victorian dresses in performance of hyperfeminity, along with etchings of plants half dying and part blooming. Embedded inside the paintings are collaged stories and testimonials, moving the work from the individual to the collective, a reminder of beauty as a collective burden. In the end, the artist produces a vivid, confrontational and intimate specter of paintings, a figurative yet surreal invitation into this state of limbo. I am the curator of this exhibition titled Who We Are When the Glory Is Gone and this is a debut solo exhibition by Jessica Suarez. Um, so the inspiration behind the works by the, by, by the artist it stems from her experiences dealing with alopecia, which is a condition where you lose your hair and your hair starts thinning. Your hair starts thinning and then you lose your hair. Um, and so the, the paintings and the work basically journey through that experience of hair loss and also kind of making sense of it and coming to terms with it as well. So it's really kind of a, a journey and an expedition of sorts. So you have a lot of figures in the paintings where they're holding wigs or they have wigs on their heads. 
Um, there's some images where they, they have scarves as well. And then, of course, you have this sort of finality of certain images where the, the, the character in the painting is holding a hair clipper, trying to shave their head. There's also images around like distortion. So you have frames, you have sometimes a headless character, and then you see the reflection of the, of the, of the character in a mirror. And so this kind of play on distortion, the idea of reality versus perception, what we're going through in our real lives and how we have to present ourselves in the world. And I think one of the things that's interesting is like things like scarves and, um, and wigs become kind of masks in some way. And, and ultimately, it's really about this idea of belonging, right? Like the things that make us belong in the world that show that we have these markers um, that allow us to fit in with everybody else in the world. And so hair become hair is the sort of point of departure, but it's really about our perception, with, our obsession with image, value of what we look up as people. I notice how everything is hair themed, like it's related to hair. And um, when you look deeper into the um, canvas, you see printouts of, of different um, hair loss related topics. And I never really thought of hair loss as a big subject before now. So looking at everything and seeing how people struggle with it and maybe they will have to wear um, stuff to cover their hair. Like, it's something that I don't really think about normally. So it's a, it's a nice thing, a nice topic. Formerly Art World Africa presents the 2023 National Undergraduate Art Competition Series 2, themed Paint Your Aspired Nation for the undergraduate level and Paint Your Aspired Lagos for the secondary school level. Now let's take a look at some of the activities that took place during the first stage of the competition. The two art competitions are being endorsed by Lagos State Government, the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture. The objective of this competition is revolves around participation of youth in political dialogue, community development, planning, national development, advancement and imparting the political leadership development for the state and for the nation as a whole. The competitions are platform for youth and the community at large to express their aspired state and nation through different forms of visual arts with representation from diverse communities across the state and the nation. It is an open call for the youth to evaluate, assess, discuss and brainstorm ideas about their aspired state and aspired Nigeria with the use of various arts expression that resonates with the theme of the competition. It is a, a good thing that this kind of competition is coming up and I believe it's going to create a healthy rivalry among the children. Apart from the fact that it affects the circle, motto, eye contact and uh, and contact of the children is also a way of expressing themselves. And the way you express yourself matters a lot. Culturally, socially, and all that. And it's a way of uh, keeping our history alive. 
think it's a loadable project. If we continue with this effort, uh, we will breed new artists that we take off and uh, that we take and um, replace or continue the good work that is on ground. Uh, for Bali is an organization that needs to, to be supported towards this effort because year in, year out, we are turning out uh, students from the higher institution and um, a kind of a competition like this will create a kind of um, healthy uh, relationship among the students, among the competitor and um, in the nearest future they will see life as, uh, as uh, how do I call it now, like a global village because art generally is to unify people. People in art will speak one language anyhow you want to look at it. Either you are a painter, a sculptor, a graphic artist, no matter what form of art you do, we are still relating uh, the same language. I'm here as a panelist to see the works of these um, up and coming artists. I wish everyone a very good um, outing, particularly for the students. And um, we, the panel of judges, we hope to do justice to what we see. I'm particularly happy that um, Kobali Art World Africa is actually uh, just instituting this uh, project, uh, which is a um, competition among children and students of secondary school and even the other graduates. Uh, this uh, will help to reawaken the spirit of uh, visual arts, you know, and uh, the culture of um, uh, uh, the culture of um, learning, uh, particularly as it relates to art. Uh, in Nigeria, and I think uh, doing this is actually for posterity, you know, which I know that um, at the end of the day, it will be able to encourage the visual art community. Art is my life. Art is what I express. Art is how I live. Art is, you know, the expression of your feeling. Art is valuable. Art is something that individual, everyone has it in him. Only if you could discover it and then, um, you know, we have to celebrate art because all our life is expression of art. That's why I'm being honored. I want to appreciate the Full Bali Art for giving the children, the young artists, or the upcoming one in the secondary school, open their eyes to the value of art. Because art, it gives expression, make them aware of their environment as well. And, you know, giving a platform for them, because I will tell you that art opens up a lot of things, which helps in other subjects. So this is one of a kind for a private gallery organizing a competition like this. I want to give it up for Bali for doing a nice job, a good job that they keep tasty. This is their second phase and the undergraduate as well, supporting them. Because this will encourage the younger ones who feel that yes, art is valuable, art is recognized, art is, art is something that you should be able to express yourself, you know, it is our voice. We speak our voice verbally in our creation of what? I will just imagine what Lagos would be like. A place free, a place where there's where people have equal access to free education and free healthcare. A place where there is no poverty and homelessness. A place where everybody is treated with with love, respect and dignity, regardless of their beliefs, religious and their backgrounds. In my inspired Lagos there is not um, any traffic and this is main this is mainly because of new new public transportation methods for example a metro 
there is lesser traffic due to um, more traffic regulations and more lanes in highway. My Aspire Lagos would be a place where there's safe security everywhere. People could move around knowing that they're in a secure environment. A place where the transportation is affordable to all. Where we have a um, train that is functioning. Today on Theatre, Bolali Austin Peters production presents Fumilaya Ransom Kuti the movie, a cinematic triumph that inspires and empowers this landmark film, marks a new era in Bolali Austin Peters' illustrious journey and showcases its passion for creating captivating movies for global audiences. Let's check this out. It's a souvenir from trying to give you a better future. Hello, Hello. darling. Hey, dearest. Uh, How are you? Fine, thank you. How are the boys? They have gone to sleep. Oh, my oh, boys. She. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm Abosa de Oza Osho, and I acted the role of Bertha Ransom Kuti, the mother of Israel Ransom Kuti. The experience was thrilling. I mean, that's, I'm trying to find the right word, but I'm thinking that thrilling will actually help me describe it. That's how the experience was. Like I said, it was my debut, and just being there, now seeing it live, oh, brought so much tears to my eyes. I just kept crying and crying. This is like a dream come true. My dearest. Sit, we need to talk. No, 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 there's no time. I need to take a quick shower and head back to the protest. A lot of what was portrayed in the movie, I knew because I'd read books, but not in the depth that uh, has been shared in the movie. Uh, one great thing is that we do not have enough history about ourselves. So our children know a lot about the history of Europe, America, etc., but they don't know enough about uh, Nigeria. And I think these kind of productions will help fill the gap. I, I, I think I consider it uh, an A-class uh, production, very epic, and um, I think and I hope that it would win many global awards. Lioness of Nisha be indeed. By social mafia, don't mind the Lagos press. They print only to sell their newspapers. Like Kabe she said, the women will soon be tired and go home. I played the character Balogu, the king's chief enforcer. That's the uh, Oba of Egba land. Why? There's a lot to say actually, but I'll try and just speak on moments that hits me. The most. It makes us to stand out exceptionally, makes us the standard, brings about bring, brings out our uniqueness, makes us extraordinary. And telling it in our own way, not having a stranger telling it for us. This is we telling our own story. It took me back to researching and trying to understand Formula and some Kuti because we had to get a like exact look. You, if you watch the movie, you will see that you know the glasses, the gap tooth. For example, Auntie Joker Silva doesn't have a gap tooth, right? And we had to make sure that that gap tooth was there. Reason being that that's a significant look of Formula around some country, right? You notice it, exactly. So it was something that we had to be very, very um, delicate about. And we had to make sure that everything is 
even if it's not 100% like 100% authentic but it was at least 95.5 <laughs> J'ai besoin de rester ici à Lagos et décrocher cette interview. C'est une plus grosse histoire que celle de Mobutu. You know, being part of a project like this reminds you of what our work is all about. Correcting misconceptions. Um, giving people a sense of pride of who they are. Of the generations of women who have birthed us. The kind of women who have birthed us. We shouldn't take it lightly, you know, and a film like this reminds us of that. The film takes the viewers on an epic journey through the life and times of Fumilayo Ransom Kuti, a woman who defied the odds and challenged the status quo in her quest for freedom, equality and dignity. Fumilayo was not only an activist, but also an educator, a philanthropist and a mother whose legacy lives on in her children and grandchildren, especially the renowned Afrobeat pioneer Fela Kuti. The film is a stunning portrayal of Fumilayo's courage, vision and impact that will captivate and inspire everyone. Thank you so much, everybody. Everybody here, thank you for a fabulous job. And the Kuti family that gave me the story, they trusted us to give us the story and they absolutely loved it. And it has a powerful message for Nigeria and Nigerians. Thank you so much, have a lovely evening. Beautiful African setting there, I must say, and kudos to Bolanle Austin Peters and our team for constantly telling the African stories. Now, it is very important for us to preserve our cultural heritage because it keeps our identity as a people and for our story and wealth of knowledge to be transmitted from one generation to the next. We must continue to preserve it. And that's our package on this edition of the Art Express. We do hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.